Union Regents approved tuition hikes as declining demographics and lottery earnings take their toll on funding. And two things that make Albuquerque special are, well, we'll show you, and it's bike trails and frisbee golf. I'm Dominic Aragon. And I'm Isabel Gonzalez. This and more on UNM News. The University of New Mexico Board of Regents unanimously voted on April 10 to approve tuition hikes for the main Albuquerque and Branch campuses. The university is facing a $3.6 million um, dollar budget shortfall next year due to decreases in the total number of students this year and cuts in state funding over the last few years. The board approves a main campus 3% tuition hike for students next year and a 4.6% increase in student fees. Together, that should add about $217 to the annual tuition for a student taking a full 15 to 18 credit hour load. And the regions plan to continue with 3% tuition hikes in the years to come. The branch campuses will see tuition increases ranging from 4 to slightly more than 7% next year. But due to a new incentive plan, future students completing their degrees in four years will not have to pay tuition in their final semester. With undergraduate tuition and fees at $6,664 for New Mexico residents next year, the UNM main campus will still be much cheaper than its peer institutions throughout the United States. And that's even before taking the lottery scholarship and other incentive programs into account. Still, enrollment figures are down, and that's primarily due to demographics as New Mexico's late 2000s bulge of college-age students has passed. And that affects the overall funding that UNM gets from the state. With the University of New Mexico losing students because of lower enrollment numbers, the state's flagship university loses out on potential revenue. According to Terry Babbitt, the university's tuition revenue is a big part of the budget, and a 1.5% decrease has potential losses into the hundred millions. Tuition revenue at UNM is a, is a substantial piece of our budget. It's about $134 million tuition revenue. So anytime there's a change in enrollment, that's impacted. A percent and a half enrollment decrease that we experienced this fall ends up equaling $3 million of revenue shortage. So even though the increases are rather small and, and, and definitely small compared to other institutions in the state, other universities have had four, five, and six percent decreases for a few years now. So we've managed to uh, not be in that trend. This fall was our first decrease. And um, it's, you know, it, it, it's uh, concerning. UNM junior Elliot Washington says it's predictable on what can easily happen. As a student, um, less enrollment means it's going to obviously uh, increase the price of my tuition. So uh, I'm just it's just something I got to deal with. UNM, according to Washington, is a hidden gem because of the price and value of higher education. Uh, I just feel like a lot of people don't realize, you know, the great thing that they have. I mean, you're getting a top-notch school for, I mean, a super super cheap. Price. I mean, tuition prices are around the same price as it would have been for me to go to, like, you know, a community college in California. So if inflation stays low and enrollment stay relatively steady, the 3% future tuition hikes might continue to make UNM a bargain, particularly for New Mexican students. All right, so we're joined in studio today by Elliot Washington. So, Elliot, thank you so much for, for joining us today. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, so first I want to ask you, how, what made you choose UNM? Well, uh, the great weather and the awesome people. <laughs> So, so what, what went into the decision making of choosing the University of New Mexico than otherwise choosing somewhere in California? Well, uh, one of the main thing is, is that uh, UNM has an awesome education, you know, and just a great tuition price too as well. Yeah, so one thing they do talk about is, is tuition in California, even just for, for residency, does cost a lot. Maybe share some of those figures on what you had explored before you came out here. Well, when I was looking at it, um, California tuition prices are easily three to four times as much. So when I saw, you know, UNM's in-state tuition, it was just a no-brainer for me. So for the, the students that are maybe, whether they be from California, whether they be from out of state, maybe talk a little bit about the process of, of coming in and establishing residency in New Mexico and maybe how easy or difficult that might be. Okay. Well, uh, UNM makes it really nice and easy by uh, estab establishing a residency. All you need to do is live here for a year, you know, take classes, work. And then uh, you just turn in some paperwork and, you know, you can get in-state tuition, which is really nice. Absolutely. So what advice would you give to, to students that whether they, they're looking at colleges or maybe they're already here, 
What would you say about, about trying to establish a residency or anything for out-of-state students? Um, well, if you're looking for a really good education at a really great price, I would definitely pick you in, and that's the best advice I can give you. Mr. Washer, thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. No problem. Thanks. As a research institute, UNM faculty and students often find themselves working on cutting-edge technologies like designing satellites. Ryan Kampmeyer reports on a UNM research center that's using a new manufacturing technology to cut down on the time and money spent on making high-tech projects. Engineers at the UNM Research Center Cosmiac are using the evolving technology of 3D printing to aid in the development of satellites. Cosmiac research engineer and UNM graduate Brian Zufeld says 3D printing is fundamentally different than traditional manufacturing processes. Which is in contradiction what we call subtractive manufacturing. You'll start off with a solid block of whatever material and then cut away until you receive your part. 3D printing is additive manufacturing where you lay down layers and then uh, make your part. So less waste of the material and can be produced faster. Zufeld says 3D printing enables Cosmiac to create rapid prototypes from inexpensive materials, which cuts down on manufacturing cost and project development time. Machining metals is incredibly expensive. And if you're making, say, a new type of mechanical part, you can 3D print it in plastic really fast and then see if that part's going to fit before you send it to manufacturing. Although 3D printing allows Cosmiac to create inexpensive prototypes, Deputy Director of Cosmiac Craig Keefe says the technology still has room to grow. There, there are a lot of limitations. Uh, I mean, one is the materials. Uh, you're kind of limited right now to the materials that the printers are designed for. Uh, also limited is the electronics. Uh, these printer heads get to a couple hundred degrees Celsius, so I can't put anything like batteries in there while it's printing because of explosions. Even with the current limitations in mind, Keith has a positive outlook on the future of 3D printing. Whenever I say I need a radio and I can print not just the housing or the outer structure, but all the electronics into it as well, that's the future. And we may still be a decade out from that, but it's, it's coming along. This is Ryan Kampmeyer reporting. We have Ryan Kampmeyer joining us here today to tell us a little bit more about those projects. Hi Ryan, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, so tell me, how long has this kind of technology been around? Um, it's been around in some sort of capacity, even going back as far as the 1980s, but it's really gained prominence um, in the last about five to 10 years. And how reliable is it? Um, you might think that it could get uh, really froggy really easily if somebody knocks into something or if there's a, a little knot in the plastic or something like that but actually because people have been hacking away at it for so long it's it's really reliable. And is this available to the public? Yeah if you have around five hundred dollars you can buy a an entry-level machine that will print things and if you have the know-how you can actually go online and download the schematics to make one yourself. Well, that's really cool. I'm going to have to try it. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Thanks. The new urbanism is characterized by pedestrian-friendly retail and working hubs, mass transit, and more dense housing. But for a predominantly suburban city like Albuquerque, the new urbanism may mean taking advantage of its balmy weather and recreational trails. This past week, the city broke ground on a 50-mile bicycling and walking loop that connects most of Albuquerque's shopping and recreation areas. Diana Vargas reports that cycling around town is the way to go. Local bike shop owner Richard Noland rents out bikes to customers who can then take them around throughout the city. He says bike riding has many social advantages that go along with its personal ones. I believe in cycling as a way to better the future and help people and help society and help the earth. Noland also takes pride in servicing customers no matter what their previous biking experience is, noting that keeping all customers satisfied is how he asserts a competitive advantage over other bike shops around town. We welcome everybody and we offer top quality services, top quality products that uh, stand the test of time. Local bike trails around Albuquerque offer great views and pristine paths for riders like Patrick McGrady who have taken a strong liking to strolling on the trails. 
I think it's as close to ideal as you can get. The weather is very cooperative. Um, 400 some odd miles of trails, both on street, off street. Um, the community seems very interested in supporting cycling. I don't know if that's because so many people here do ride. Um, a lot of the pros come down here to train in the early season because the weather is so cooperative. Um, whatever the reason, yeah, I think Albuquerque is a hell of a place to ride a bicycle. Riding the trails in Albuquerque is an increasingly popular activity, but Nolan has only two pieces of advice he would give to all bikers who are going out for a ride. Keep one eye in the back of your head and keep it rubber side down. This is Diana Vargas reporting. And as summer quickly approaches, people in Albuquerque, like in most places, take to the links. But as Kyle Herrera reports, one local icon has a different sort of link in mind when she aims for the links. And it's something that Albuquerque is becoming a leader in promoting. It's a sport with no dress code, clubhouses, or carts. Rather than aiming for holes, the golfers shoot for chain link baskets. Disc golf is a recreational activity with no restrictions of age or gender. Professional disc golfer Sheila Tornado Kirkham is one of New Mexico's premier throwers in the sport. She says she became recognized as a professional over 20 years ago. I started playing in 1993. I went pro in 1994, and I've been pro ever since then. Kirkham proudly sports the number 7,646 on her sleeve. That important number is her Professional Disc Golf Association World Ranking. Due to her hard work and love for the sport, Kirkham was recognized by the world leader in disc sports. I got uh, hit up by Discraft for a sponsorship and I was the first and only sponsored player in the state of New Mexico and have been until for the last, I think, last year, it seems like New Mexico disc golf has grown enough. Kirkham has seen the number of disc golf courses in the state of New Mexico expand from two to over 80. And she says it's important for her to create exposure and grow the sport of disc golf. Actually, the biggest thing is to be a good ambassador, to try and encourage more people to play to help the growth of the sport. Basically what people look at us and, and me as being a trailblazer, there's always something to be learned from anyone that I meet. University of New Mexico student Carlos Martinez recently started throwing discs and he can't get enough of it. I started playing disc golf maybe about a month ago. Um, ever since then I've been playing maybe like once or twice a week. Um, I go down to Roosevelt Park. I mean it's just a great place for beginners. There's a lot of people that help me play there. If you want to try disc golf for yourself, a great beginner course is just minutes away from UNM at Roosevelt Park. It's where Kirkham learned to play, and because of its hilly terrain, it's a great place to learn to throw. Because Roosevelt is my home course, and it's, it, this course can actually teach you just about everything you need to know in the game. Reporting from Roosevelt Park, this is Kyle Herrera. Well, it looks like a lot of fun out there at Roosevelt Park. Have you ever tried your hand at Frisbee golf? No, I haven't, but it looks like a lot of fun. I definitely want to try it. Same here. Well, that's all we have here on All the Time for UNM News. I'm Dominic Aragon. And I'm Isabel Gonzalez. Thank you for joining us and see you next time.